here we are, finally recording out in wonderful Southern Colorado here with Rob Williams. And I'm just so honored to be in this interview finally because we've got a lot to talk about and clarification and really discuss the power of nature. Right, right, right. I'm so glad you're here, Alex, and we get a chance to do this in nature. This is the beautiful part of uh, the conversation as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what brings you to nature. Why is nature so important, especially with the work that you're doing right now? Well, it's, um, it's important to me because I've lived in cities all my life, big cities, Los Angeles, uh, Denver, Colorado, that sort of thing. And when I finally came and found this magnificent spot in the Sangre de Cristo mountain range of south central Colorado, I just fell in love with it. It was something that I guess my heart had been searching for for many years. And when the time was right and I was ready, I, um, I got to be here. I'm very, very grateful to, to this place and to the universe for drawing me here. Were you always so drawn to nature, or was there a process that helped you realize the, the, how nature was so connected to everything? Did, did you always see nature as part of what your work is? I didn't know what my work was for the longest time. I mean, I was well into adulthood before uh, my work ever even showed up. I was in my 40s, and uh, before that, it was, I think, all preparatory. In other words, I did a lot of things. I, I went to school, of course, and got... Uh, your standard uh, education and, and so on. Well, I guess it wasn't so standard after all. I, I was a philosophy major at UCLA. I guess that's not considered uh, very mainstream, but I then needed to introduce um, that idea and who I was to, um, to the mainstream in the sense of wanting to eat and uh, sleep indoors and all that like everybody else. So I turned what I learned in philosophy uh, into a job and I learned to work with people and with ideas and to do problem solving. I spent some time in the backpacking camping industry here in Colorado for about five years. Transitioned into telecommunications. I uh, was general manager for a cable television company for about six years here in Colorado. Learned what I needed to learn in the mechanics of the business world and then I felt a very strong urge to, to exit that world. There was something inside me calling for this exit. There had to be more to life than just what was on cable TV. So uh, when I made the transition, I was able to move into a completely different world of psychotherapy. I had gone back to school during my business career, got a master's degree in counseling at the University of Colorado, and began a uh, um, career in uh, psychotherapy. Well, I think the truth is that spirituality was really always a part of my life. It became more prominent the older I got. Even when I was a kid, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old, I had some experiences that tipped me off to the fact that there's more to the world than what I could see and hear and touch and feel and squeeze. I didn't know what to make of those experiences early on, but nevertheless, they were nested in my mind, and particularly in my subconscious mind, that maintained that awareness of something, uh, there's more to this than meets the eye, this thing called life. So I lived in uh, Southern California when I was a child mostly and spent a lot of time at the beach in the summers. And I, I really think the ocean was my first spiritual teacher, Alex. It, was, uh, it taught me a lot about life. I didn't realize it at the time and I wouldn't have called it spiritual teaching at the time. But I love to body surf, you know, I love being in the ocean. I never did get on a surfboard because it seemed to separate me from the ocean and from this feeling of raw power in, that was in nature and in the ocean. But I also learned a lot of lessons from nature in the ocean in that way. And I learned that if you swim with the power of the ocean instead of against it, you do a lot better. Catching the wave at the right time, not too soon, not too late. You get a full ride all the way into the beach and it's beautiful and, and easy to do. It's quite natural. So I learned that going with the flow, uh, which we call it now in, in, uh, in the world of self-help, uh, is really what the ocean uh, could teach you to, to do. And it did a very good job of that when I was very young. So I moved into a series of experiences through my life that kept teaching me more and more about the nature of life and about the nature of nature. And that's where I got hooked. I got hooked on it for years. I didn't know what to do with it, and I was living in a city, and it made it particularly difficult to really be close to nature in a lot of ways. I, I had non-natural buildings all around me. But the times in my life I did get a chance to be out in nature, I was touched so deeply. I was so uh, guided by the, I would call it, the wisdom of nature. And as I learned that nature had a lot more to teach than just the things I could see, like trees and mountains and streams and the ocean and so on, but there were fundamental principles of life that uh, made nature 
what she was. And there was great wisdom in that. So over the years, I learned to pay more and more attention to nature until I could finally make my home in, in, in her in a way that is very intimate and it's an everyday experience. With Psyche, as you mentioned, it's not something that you created necessarily. It was how you describe as being almost a, a conduit for this information to come through you. That's what exactly right, as a matter of fact. It's very awkward to talk about Psyche and you say, well, so Rob, you're the originator of Psyche, or you're the founder, or you're the creator, or something like that. All those terms are fundamentally flawed. That, that's not how Psyche originated on this planet. It originated more as a gift that came through me, not from me. I was very honored to receive the gift. I was very confused when it came in because of its methodology. It, it arrived as a series of whole and complete patterns for change in my head. And, and I knew that it wasn't me just making it up because on the day that it occurred, the first pattern started to come in. I saw a visual representation like a, like a teleprompter. You know, if you're reading the news and you see the teleprompter and all the words are going through and all the text is on the teleprompter, it was kind of like that. It was moving fairly slowly. I got excited because I could see words, and, I, and that was very unusual for me because I've never been good at visualizing. Uh, all of the uh, self-help methodologies that require you seeing what you want, they were a disaster for me because I couldn't see anything. I close my eyes, screen goes black. So I, in this case, all of a sudden, it wasn't black. And what I did see was this beautiful uh, text and, uh, and just going through my mind. And I got excited, and I typed it into my computer at home, which is where I was when this uh, process began. And before I knew it, I had a complete pattern, very involved pattern, actually, of 13 paired statements a belief with all of the specific instructions to utilize them in a very constructive and positive way. So I was stunned. I didn't, that had never happened to me before. And I thought there's something going on here. I just didn't know what it was. I didn't get an instruction manual with this information. I just got the information. So from that point, I became curious about it. I read it over and over. It, met, it made perfectly good sense to me logically, but since I didn't know its origin and I didn't know if it had any effect that was positive or not, I, I used myself as a guinea pig and then a few friends that were brave enough to, to say, okay, well, I'll try that. You know, we didn't know whether we were going to spontaneously combust or <laughs> blow up or what. We had no idea. But we were adventuresome and it seemed reasonable. And so we uh, facilitated this pattern of change with each other. And uh, the fact of the matter is, Alex, nothing but good came out of it. It was, uh, I saw miraculous, what I would call miraculous changes in my own clients. I was, I was doing private practice in psychotherapy at the time. Uh, of course, not using Psyche because it was just in the, in the processes of showing up in my world. But all the other things I had studied um, were part of my psychotherapy practice from what I learned in graduate school, sort of insight-based uh, counseling. Um, I studied NLP and hypnotherapy, various forms of kinesiology and so on. None of them seemed to quite have all of the elements that felt right for me. They all had valuable information, but uh, Psyche really uh, is more of a synthesis, I would have to say, of all these things than uh, being uh, just like any one of them. Like I said, I studied many of the other modalities that still are there and, and being helpful to a lot of people in a lot of ways. But as I said, there always seemed to be something missing there. And the two things that were missing the most, the one that I could identify early on was a sense of spirituality. Most of the things I studied were more um, uh, mechanical processes and they were highly dependent upon the skill of the practitioner or facilitator and didn't have very much to do with what was going on with the person who came in for the help. It, it was really to me more like the mainstream medical model. That is to say, I'm the doctor, you're not, and I'll fix you. So I'm the practitioner, I'm the skilled one, I know more about you and your mind than you do and therefore I will do what I'm here to do and then you'll be all better. It was a kind of fix-it model, a do-to or do-on model rather than a do-with model. And in Psyche, one of the major differences is it really is a do-with model. The way we see it from this world view is people come in with all the resources they need to lead a, ha a happy, healthy life. They just got confused about how to put the parts together and they're confused about basic things like who are they as a, as a being? You know, what's their worldview? That's as important to me or more important than anything about your diet, uh, your habits, your uh, addictions and all that. Those are to me symptoms of a deeper cause. 
The deepest cause is, in my opinion, and what I think is the foundation of Psyche, is the understanding that we've forgotten. We've forgotten that we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And once you forget that, then all manner of symptoms can show up because you're feeling separate from Mother Earth, you're feeling separate from your own spirit, you feel separate from everybody else. I finally uh, gave it a name, this idea, I called it the illusion of separation disorder. And so of all the psychological disorders that need treatment that sort of supersede all the other ones, I'd say that's it. If we could come back to understanding who we are and first and foremost as these beings of spirit, having a physical human experience. And that allows us to feel the connection to the universe and to everything and everyone in it. So, you know, the ancient civilizations knew this, and this was what was so beautiful about ancient cultures, many of them. They understood the interconnectedness of all things. Our science now in quantum physics, the leading edge of science, is finally catching up with this ancient wisdom that's thousands and thousands of years old. I mean, the idea that we are part of this beautiful setting in which we are having this chat and we're part of the trees, we're part of the earth, we are the earth, we are the sky, we are the trees, we are nature. Nature is the wisdom behind what you see and we're part of that wisdom, we're part of that divine truth, that divine intelligence.